I came to Tbilisi, Georgia as an artist in distress. Two years ago, I was living in Boston, I was running my own freelance company, and making a lot of money. But that success felt mediocre, and it took me moving 5,000 miles to figure out why. I decided to be an animator when I was 11, and I told my dad, and thanks to his enthusiasm and support, I started taking classes immediately. From there, I grew my knowledge to incorporate all things post-production, and I find it endlessly fascinating. I've worked in television for public broadcast, cartoons for Cartoon Network, feature films and documentaries, daily news, and ultimately my own independent commercial work. My career has brought me from the East Coast to the West Coast of the United States and back. And all of these jobs, gigs, and internships, two things were always the same. One, I tried to make more high quality and innovative work, and two, I was always told not to. I hated the way my skills were being utilized. I was constantly being bullied into compromising on quality and subsequently made to dress up an unclear message, selling some product, some new photo app that was going to change the community, some new marketing company that was going to change the world. Once, a client even asked me to guarantee that his video go viral. Clearly, he did not understand the meaning of the word viral. <laughs> I was using a bag of tricks that easily delighted my clients and bosses, and all the while, I was struggling to stay passionate. Could the purpose of all of this intense focus and commitment be to just sell a product or a brand and then move on to the next one? Let me let you inside the artist's brain for a second. When you have a good idea as an artist, you have to stand behind it. When you don't, good ideas deteriorate. And when you are making something you don't like, you inevitably let go of that initial vision that made you excited to create in the first place. In the end, all creativity is a race. You prep for the race by filling your head with work you admire and things you see. You approach the start line, and the starting gun is in your hand. But you pace back and forth, waiting. You only get to fire that gun when you get that lightning bolt of inspiration, a figment of something you need to see. You take off, and from then, you're racing the devolving vision of that initial lightning bolt. And if you take too long, or if something throws you off course, you become disoriented, fragmented, intangible yourself. Because when you have a great idea, you live that idea. You are that idea. Those lightning bolt ideas are borrowed from somewhere we can't understand, and we don't get to linger on the thought. Inspiration has a shelf life. And so, it was in this intangible, fragmented state that I moved through many industries, staying at each place just long enough to learn all of the new skills that the job required of me. I would add it to my resume and move on to a new beginning somewhere else. As I negotiated more and more impressive job titles, I was unchallenged, unsatisfied, although inarguably a huge success. Exactly one year ago today, I came to Georgia to work with BBC legend Natalia Antalava and her journalism startup, Coda Story. The idea was not so simple. We were going to be reimagining how to visualize text pieces for journalism. These stories, didn't have any photos, didn't have any videos, were sensitive in nature, and therefore we could use none of the usual animation gimmicks I was used to. So I said, okay. This is a challenge I was ready to take on. A challenge to make beautiful videos while maintaining the dignity of the subjects and art form and to do it in a turnaround time appropriate for news. Typically, one of our animations can be made in a week, from scripting to final deliverable two days of which are actual animating. That is a very fast turnaround time. There was the added hurdle of finding a way to reach people without using my usual gimmicks. 
a carefully built tool set of canned visual concept that sparkled, shined, and awed clients pretty easily, without a lot of effort on my part. But it's just not appropriate for the subject matter. And so, we got to work. And some of our first stories were about LGBTQ rights in the region. Here, we were tasked with visualizing the brutal beating and murder of numerous gay men in the Ukraine. Now, there's nothing funny about that. There's nothing cute about that. It's not a cartoon. It's a serious piece of journalism. We started with toe tags and body bags for drama, and then evolved our idea to something more tasteful and just as powerful. But it took a lot of effort to get it right, and many over-dramatized concepts. And it's important, not just for the men that have been hurt or killed. It's important for an entire region miscategorizing sexual preference as evil. I got to visualize this story in a way that I think is beautiful, ethical, and respectful to all subjects involved. We've made video after video like this, visualizing brutal, cruel, or unbelievable stories with as much honesty and respect as possible. I had no idea that we were creating a style and technique that was going to grow in popularity so much and give us such a foothold in the industry. And as we grow in popularity, we are given the opportunity to put more time and resources into these stories, elevating the medium. I get to visualize story after story in a way that has dignity, in a way that's important, and in a way that has no gimmicks. And so, I've returned to the education of my film school years. I'm telling stories in an incredibly cinematic way by focusing on beautiful compositions and communicating using simple movements. With the help of a network of local artists, I'm building scenes that recreate moments in life that are hard to describe or connect to unless you can see something. And with how desensitized audiences are to horrific photography and video, visual storytellers need to get more creative with how they reach people. Journalists and animators belong together. Animation plus journalism equals gold. <laughs> As it turns out, not a lot of news companies are doing this. For some reason, there's the, if it's not broken, don't fix it argument. They have plenty of readers, so why risk wasting resources on a pricing gamble to reach new audiences? Unfortunately, attention spans are shortening, and, our, and audiences are getting desensitized to familiar formats. That's why journalism has to be right at the forefront of visual storytelling. Right there with the movies, the tech companies, and video games. 
we can't be chasing an audience that has already moved on to something cooler. If we want to change minds, we need to be brand new. So, I'd like to ask those of you in journalism a question. Why not open your mind to some new ways of visualizing a story? Why not bring art into your journalism? Journalism speaks to the intellectual side, and art to the emotional. The merging of the two is not only natural, but electric. It's more true to the way we experience reality. Artists want work that we can care about, and we are sick of the gimmicks, so why not hire an artist? Now, the artists. Don't settle for a job making something that you don't believe in. The market is changing. We are in higher demand now than ever before, and in many different industries. We don't have to work for free anymore or beg for work from undeserving clients. Don't settle making art for people that can't make art themselves. You are not the vessel for someone else's creativity. And I promise you, if you keep pushing for the right job, you will find something that makes you feel like you're selling more than other people's ideas. You'll be selling truth. Journalism has saved animation for me. And I think animation can save journalism as well. There are always people that will read news. But how do you make people that are not inclined to news more aware of issues that they need to understand about their world? So that's what we're doing here at CODA. That's what I'm doing here in Georgia. In an increasingly polarized world, what can be more important than a profession that fosters empathy? People need to have a better understanding of the world around them. I am proud to be able to translate in, into a visual format, and we are going to keep pushing, and we are going to keep finding new ways to show these stories, whether it's 360, or interactive apps, or graphic novels, or augmented reality. We will find a way to bring these very important stories to you. Thank you.